Well, today is the day Lenovo has delivered our review unit of the Chromebook Duet and we can finally get in the box and re-remember what this thing feels like. And remember again, if this is going to be the device we think it's gonna be, this entry level, very affordable, premium feeling kind of package that I think is gonna to appeal to a lot of you. So let's get in the box and check it out. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of consumers because they're awesome at what they do and that's keeping your browsing secure and safe when you're at home or out and about and on the go. If you'd like to learn more about them and their services, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN to learn more and you can get started today. So without further ado, let's hop in the box here. And again, like this trend of 2020 is nice boxing for Chromebooks and it, I've had people in the comments say, I can't believe you're getting excited about a box. But again, you gotta remember, we've been doing this for years and we've always opened brown plain boxes. And so to see a manufacturer take a little bit of extra time, just you know, to add some color and some whiteness to the box and it's just a little nicer feeling, especially for a sub $300 Chromebook, this is just a nice touch. So right up off the top, we've got the tablet that is just as thin and light and like firm, we'll get into it in a second. Uh, that I remember it in Vegas. Uh, probably a charger here. Yeah, so the, oh, I forgot that's in the box. Um, so yeah, just a, a small charger. And a lot of the accessories here kind of feel like phone accessories because you got to remember the processor inside this tablet's actually a, a basically a phone processor. Um, so probably as far as power delivery and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, USB type C to A. So this is gonna charge with any USB type C, but it's not gonna take, uh, from what I can tell, it's not gonna take a whole lot of power. You don't have to use a laptop charger, for instance, to actually get this thing charged up. Um, it's too shiny, I can't read it. But if it's like the 10E, I I think it's just a two amp charger. So kind of a normal phone charger. Um, and then in the box, you also get this USB-C to headphone um, jack uh, because there is not a headphone jack on this device. Uh, so it's nice that they included that. Kind of wish they would have put a headphone jack on here. I, I don't know, I feel like a tablet has enough space for one, but then you have to put uh, a DAC inside and all that kind of stuff. So who knows? I. This thing's gonna get a ton of passes for me all over the place when we do our review and anything else with it because, you know, even at the higher spec one, that this is the 128 gig model, you know, it's it's $299 and it'll probably go on sale and be even cheaper than that down the road. So it's gonna get a ton of passes because ultimately it's it's super affordable. So uh, a lot of people will be able to get a hold of the 279 version of this, which has 64 gigs of internal storage. Um, so those things are always gonna be worth noting because ultimately price informs our opinions on things. And when stuff is cheap, it feels pretty nice, we can just kind of let it slide with some stuff. So here's that keyboard. Let me peel this off there. Yeah, just as kind of nice and rigid as I recall it. I mean, again, you gotta consider how much this thing cost. Um, you're not gonna get like a full aluminum, amazing, you know, magic, whatever Apple calls their keyboard thing, experience out of this thing, that thing's $350. That The keyboard for the, the iPad Pro costs more than this entire package. So, um, but yeah, key travel feels good here. Trackpad's nice and clicky. Um, so again, and it's nice that it's included in the box. So that's, that's added benefit here. And then this is just the back portion that, that gives us the stand functionality. Has that really nice, uh, uh, cloth kind of texture on the back of it and yeah so it's got that kind of hinge a la you know Microsoft Surface um, that kind of just allows you to bend the, the tablet back at multiple angles uh, so we'll attach all this stuff here in just a second and let me check real quick obligatory paperwork that no one reads yeah, okay. So let's not forget at the end of the day, this thing still is a Chromebook, but it's also a tablet. And so it's just gonna be an interesting use case ultimately with the Lenovo because again, I, I'm i not sure how many people wanna work from this thing uh, all day, every day, uh, but I could see, you know, like my kids using it uh, on a regular basis and you know, I've, again, I, I reviewed the 10E, so I've spent some time staring at a, a screen that's exactly the same as on this one. 
And, and I can tell you, it's like you can kind of get used to it. Uh, and it's nice to have on the go. It's light. It's something you can just run down to the coffee shop, uh, get some tasks done on. But really starting to leverage Chrome OS as a tablet OS, that's, I think, going to be the, the use case here for this thing is trying to figure out what it's like to really use Chrome OS on a tablet because we honestly haven't had a good chance to do so. Like the Slate, I know I bang on the Slate all the time, but it was, it was just too big to be a good tablet. Um, it was better suited when it was in a keyboard case or something. And so um, I always wanted it to be a Chromebook. It just kind of leaned that way. This thing feels like these are, these are like additions. These are things that I'll have with me. Uh, and, and use on occasion, but ultimately I want to pick this thing up and use it the way it is here. So that's kind of the way I'm going to approach this device. But ultimately, um, yeah, a little fingerprinty already, um, so keep that in mind. But this nice metal chassis down here and what Lenovo is calling like a plastic glass something up here. I'm guessing this is up here so that all your antennas can get through, uh, but you got the dual microphone array up here. Uh, speaker ports up there. We've got a power button, volume rocker. Again, no headphone jack on the side. Uh, USB type C input, and that will serve as charging and uh, display output. As we noted on the 10E, um, unless they've changed something on this, the display out uh, isn't the best in the world. You don't get as many options as you would like probably from Chrome OS, but we'll test that obviously. Then you get your pogo pins and your kind of alignment nub things that go with the keyboard. So let's actually pop this thing together. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice and firm. And three out of three, it lines right up. So uh, it's nice to see, you know, devices that use magnets just pop into place. And when they kind of miss and don't quite line up, uh, that's kind of annoying. And that, yeah, drops right on there. Uh, not perfect. Not the strongest magnets. I mean, once it's on there, you know, that thing is, that thing's on there pretty good, but it didn't, I didn't just have to drop it on. See, like I dropped it and it kind of missed a little bit. So you'll have to take your time when you're dropping that on. But altogether, once you put all the stuff around it, like put its armor on basically, uh, it's not like super lightweight. Like this kind of feels like carrying a small Chromebook. So again, you gotta keep these things in mind. Like if you're gonna use it with all these accessories, it's not going to be the mobile light thin little thing that it was before you put all the stuff onto it. But we'll flip it up. Yeah, and that hinge feels great. Uh, and this, you know, this is a pretty smooth table, so um, you know, I'm gonna have to get logged in and everything here, but yeah, that feels nice. And ultimately, flip it closed, slap it down, boom. And then the converse is true. You open it up, pop this off, Pop that off and boom, you're ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I like what I'm seeing here. Um, we're obviously going to have to do all kinds of testing on this thing because ultimately it comes down to is this thing fast enough to use as a Chromebook? Is using a Chromebook tablet like this something that people are going to want to do? What I can definitely say is from just the the feel, the firmness of this thing, um, how good the screen looks. Again, we talked about this with the 10E. It's a 400 nit screen. It's full HD plus, so it's 1920 by 1200. It's got the MediaTek P60T processor, otherwise known as the uh, 8183. So, you know, it's got a decent enough processor in it to get some stuff done. Um, you can see even as I'm, you know, flipping it, it moving into multiple display modes, like nice and quick. Um, things seem pretty fast on it. Again, we have a lot of testing to do with this thing. Uh, part of today was just opening it up, see if it feels as premium as I remember it. Because again, using the 10E, the, the education model of it, it kind of felt a little clunky and thick. This thing is thin. It is light, less than a pound. And definitely something I want to pick up and use like this as a tablet. I want to read stuff on it. I want to hold it and jot notes and that kind of thing on it. So um, I think it's going to be a great device for a lot of people, mainly because of the price. At $300, this is going to be the nicest package in an overall Chromebook I think that you can get across the board. I mean, right now it's hard to get Chromebooks at all. And this one is less than 300 bucks and you're getting a lot of premium materials here. And I think Lenovo has done a great job so far with all that. Again, we got to see how it performs. We've got to see how it feels to actually use this thing as a Chromebook, as a tablet, and do our whole review process with it. But so far, I can tell you that I'm as impressed as I was in Las Vegas with this thing, just having it out of the box again, having it in front of me, holding it, touching it, using it for just a few seconds. But 
obviously we'll have to uh, hold everything for our full review that will be coming pretty soon, hopefully. And if you'd like to see that, make sure and go down there and hit the subscribe button. Like this video if this has helped you out at all. Make sure and hit the notification bell as well if you'd like to get notifications when we do release that review and other videos like this. And don't forget to hit the join button as well if you'd like to see all the stuff that our members get, like custom emoji and behind the scenes footage. But until next time, guys, we'll see you.